All right, with Liberty Me, it's Kyle Platt here with Jeffrey Tucker. Needs no introduction to many of the people on the site and off the site. And we're going to talk about his Liberty Guide, How to Free Your Laundry from Government Mandated Filth. Thanks so much for being on, Jeffrey. Listen, uh, thank you for having me. I love this topic. Can we just tell the truth about laundry? Is it okay? I mean, I, I had to kind of work up to writing this guide. But okay. By the time when I was ready for it, I just unleashed hell. I mean, that, I mean I, did you read the thing? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Somebody told me that after the first couple of paragraphs, uh, they wanted to like pile all their laundry in a in a in a big pile and like set it all on fire, <laughs> which is not a bad impulse because it's actually true. Our clothes are filthy. Okay, okay. Well, uh, let's let's figure out why. Let's tell the truth about laundry that everyone has been waiting to hear. Why why are our clothes filthy? Well, okay. So you know. Uh, basically, you look back at the sweep of history, uh, laundry has been a big deal. People like clean clothes, otherwise you're stinky, they carry diseases, you know, you look like hell. Uh, so a lot of the innovation that's happened over the course of, you know, uh, human history has been about getting laundry clean in a way that doesn't take over your life, you know? So, um, so you don't have to spend all the time going down the river, lifting up buckets, bringing them back, building a fire, boiling the stuff and sticking, you know, and making soap out of phosphates and God knows what. I mean, this, this consumed like all of history until uh, the modern times with the invention of the amazing, wonderful, liberating washing machine. It was amazing. It was fantastic. It all happened in like the 1950s. Uh, by the early 1960s, they were in every household. And my God, you know, suddenly half of the human race, uh, namely women who had been sort of culturally uh, assigned to this role of, of keeping the laundry clean, were free to do something else with their lives besides keep clothes clean. And it was fantastic. Uh, the, the laundry machines of the early 1960s were, were great because they were blasting hot water, huge amounts of water swirling around clothes, washing, 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 and then uh, great soaps, and then that magic ingredient phosphate to extract the soap out, and with it, all the oil and the filth and the dirt that was in it, and out came crispy, crunchy, beautifully white, super clean clothes that we could put on and live happy freaking lives, all right? That's the world of the 1950s, 60s, and the 1970s. Then things began to change. Okay, okay. So this is great, and I've never heard it said like that, where when we get the washing machine, all of a sudden, women are liberated to do everybody really, but you know, like you said, they had been relegated to the culturally cultural assigned. Task. I, yeah, you know, yeah, by the central plan that, in the 1950s, by the post-war elites who decided women should all make uh, careers out of uh, housewifery, and that's great. Definitely, Te uh, technological innovation as women's liberation. That's a that's a beautiful idea. That's what happened. It was a it was a glorious thing. I mean, this is like a turning point in history. We cannot underestimate the importance of this turning point in history, you know? But you brought uh, up an interesting thing, this this phosphate. So so what is the yeah. deal with that? Where did it go? Why did it go there? And how do we get it back? Okay, so yeah, so that, anyway, the yeah, just to back up a little bit. The three keys to clean laundry. Hot water, lots of water, and phosphate combined with soap. Because if you put soap in your clothes and you don't get it out, what's going to happen? It's, it's, it actually makes sense, right? You put soap in your clothes, it cleans the clothes. The problem is that the soap doesn't leave. And so all the stuff that was cleaned is actually still remains in there. And it's even worse because the soap is like holding it in there because it's kind of sticky and gluey and adheres to all the fabrics. I mean, that's what actually happens. So phosphate, the stuff that was discovered, it's a completely natural thing. You can actually make it at home through various uh, disgusting ways. Well, I'll let you look it up online. Uh, <laughs> but uh, some 500 years ago, it was discovered. And um, it's been in soap ever since. And the, the idea is that you have, you have the soap, and then you have the phosphate to extract the soap, to take it out, to kill the soap, and remove it, and cause it to swirl away in water. And that, that's how soap like works, and always has worked. And that's why it's really cool. So um, gradually, from um, the 1980s and the 1990s, with no real announcement, um, uh, the phosphates were, were removed from our soap products. And it's really a, an unbelievable tragedy. It was all because of you know, the environmentalist thing, whatever. Although there's, there's absolutely no environmentalist basis for removing phosphates from soap. Um, most of the phosphate problems in rivers and lakes, and there are problems. The thing is the phosphate makes stuff grow, you know? Mm -hmm. 
like who makes algae grow and plants grow and stuff like that because it's like this grow, magic grow stuff. Uh, so guess who likes phosphates? Farmers. Large corporate farming loves phosphates because it makes stuff grow, but the runoff of their fertilizer into lakes and rivers, you know, cause the the algae and the rivers to to grow up and like you know strangle the fish and you know. So then there's environmental hysteria, you know, designed to abolish phosphates. Um, uh, I don't think it really had anything to do with saving fish or saving rivers or whatever. It's just because there's these these grumpy people out there who really don't like us to be happy and really hate the fact that we have like clean clothes. They want us to just go back in time. So gradually, phosphates were eliminated from our soap you know, with no big announcement or anything. This is also not just laundry, but also dishwashing, too. Um, and so if you want to if you want to get phosphates back in, which you ha which you have to do, you have to add them in uh, manually. And that changes a lot of things. It's not the only change you have to make to have clean clothes, but it's an important one. Hey, Kyle, let me just kind of illustrate this really quickly. Sure. Yeah, please uh, do. Yeah. Now, so when about 20 years ago, um, when you went to the laundry section, to the soap section of your store, you saw um, you saw basically one product, which was uh, uh, laundry soap. You know, many different varieties. This one claimed to be better than this one. This one was concentrated. This one was blue. This one was a, but it's basically laundry soap. Go into uh, the CVS now or the uh, Kroger, the grocery store now, and look at what's in the laundry soap collection. I mean, it's not just laundry soap. It's specialized stain remover and little spot remover thing. And here's a little pressure point, And here's a booster powder and all these various products. I mean, like an infinite number of laundry products. So why, why do these suddenly come to exist? Is it innovation? No, it's to make up for the fact that the soaps no longer work anymore. Huh. So people have to keep buying all these endless products and they spray and they're pumping. And this is what we do now. It's unbelievable what we do uh, now to get our laundry clean. I mean, if you're not, if you're not aware of the secret to adding uh, phosphate, what you end up doing is hovering over in your laundry room, spraying every color and like scrubbing every spot. And you've got a stick and you've got a... a you know, a, a sponge and you've got a, you know, a wiper thing and a new additive and a booster and a powder. And it's like, you have a freaking chemistry set there <laughs> and, and you're having to buy all this crap and none of which really works. Oh, and then the worst thing at all, of all, um, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, people did not add bleach to whites. All right. And except on highly specialized occasions, like if you wanted to, um, you have like an extreme white for maybe linen napkins at a formal dinner or something like that. But mostly bleach, everybody knew in the past that bleach is really, really bad for cottons because it, it tears the, the fabrics down, it breaks them down, it reduces the life of your clothes you know, like dramatically and your sure, sheets. I mean, sure. it causes them to get thin and fall apart. But now with phosphates removed, the only way anybody knows to get clothes white anymore is by using bleach, and which is terrible. It destroys clothes. Sure, it's the nature of bleach. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, what's interesting to me, and I find it just an incredible thing because, you know, in the, in the past, you remember, uh, it's always the case that every new iteration of detergent or any product always claims to be new and improved, right? That's the nature of free enterprise. It's always making something new and improving it. But of course, when you take the phosphates out of soap, it's not just, uh, it's not improved. It may be new, but it's actually like worse than ever. So there was a massive kind of conspiracy on the part of all laundry soap makers basically to cover up the fact that their product no longer worked. I mean, I feel bad for them. They were subjected to these terrible government regulations. And you'd like to think that the soap manufacturers, Tide and all the rest of it would, would protest, you know, and, and announce to customers, the government regulations are ruining your soap. But that's you know, like bad for business. I mean, they they, they kind of had to like deal with the fact that their product was being ruined. So they just kind of like briefly, they started saying, well, we can take this, take this bad situation and turn it into a good thing. So here's my green environmentally friendly soap. And they put a little notice at the bottom, no phosphates, until they began to realize that actually customers, you know, caught on. No phosphates means no clean. Okay. Right, right. Well, and you can't so, as so a business. You can't buy it. You, you can't buy any soap with phosphate in it, even for, even in Mexico. I mean, this is like a like a, I, I think if you live in Mexico, you can probably buy detergent with phosphates, but but the import restrictions are so severe that you can go to Mexican grocery stores now and buy the most popular Mexican soap, and they will only allow uh, legally the importation of non-phosphate laundry 
detergent. That's ridiculous. I mean, you know, it's a rumor that spreads and everyone just believes it. But the businesses can't come out and say, hey, this laundry detergent doesn't work anymore because it doesn't right. have phosphates in it. That's terrible business. And the regulation, if it remains, you've basically just said your product's worthless and you, there's nothing you can do about it. Well, that's exactly right. And then uh, there's two other elements to this, Kyle. And I really feel like I'm taking over this interview with... Um, with too much commentary. Well, you're excited. You're excited yeah. about it, you know? Okay, that's, yeah, that's, I'm sorry. That's fair. I'm just gonna mention, okay, so I'm gonna mention two other elements here and we can divide these up. But first, sure. uh, let's talk about the washing machines themselves. Okay. okay? So if you have a washing machine, you'll see that there are like three settings. There's a small setting, a larger setting, and like a mega setting or whatever. If you use the small setting, uh, your clothes are not getting clean. I mean, I don't care, you know, because it's, it's like a cup of water or something. It's just stupid. Sure. You, you should always use the maximum setting because even that is not big enough. Regulations on washing machines have become so severe now that uh, and restrictive in their water use that there's just not enough water uh, wash. You can't wash clothes by pouring little cups of water on things and like and rubbing them around a little bit and, and then r r running some new water over it and shaking it. Okay, that is not going to get your clothes clean, but that's what modern washers do. So you always have to use the maximum setting. It's getting worse. There are regulations that are now being imposed, more and more that are being considered. They're gonna make uh, make your, your washing machines virtually useless. I mean, they, even now, practically the only way to get a really good washing machine is to either pay a gazillion dollars, because they make up in agitation for what they lack in water, mm -hmm. or go to a used appliance store and get some old thing that's been re, re, uh, re uh, constituted and reconfigured that's gonna be really loud and, and all that kind of stuff. So, and, and never get a front loading, uh, uh, washing machine, whatever you do, don't get a front loading machine. These things are terrible. Why is that? Uh, well, because they're designed to use as little water as possible. Sure. And the other thing, it's it's really weird with front loading machines because uh, you can't open them once you've closed the front door. So like you, you know, this always happens, right? You put in your laundry and you start it up and you look down and go, oh, whoops, here's an extra sock that I forgot to put in or here's an extra t-shirt, you know. And then you try to like open it and you can't, it's like locked. Uh, you, have to, you have to like unplug the machine in order to get the door open. I mean, it's just, it's it's the craziest system. You know, a washing machine that you can't open, you've got to let it run an hour and a half with this idiotically like spin this way, spin this way with just a little tiny little one inch layer of water on the bottom. And your stuff is not getting clean. It's terrible. Uh, this the the third element is hot water. Sure. And there's also been a government conspiracy to get rid of hot water. Uh, it's not just in our showers. It's it's everywhere. So so that our um, uh, our water heaters are now shipped at like 110 or 120. This, uh, dear Kyle, mm -hmm. is a perfect uh, temperature for breeding germs and bacteria and diseases. I mean, like like every horrible thing in the world thrives at 110 degrees, I can promise you. Hmm. You understand what I mean? I mean, this is, does not kill germs. It causes germs to live very happy, luxurious lives. So why would they want to regulate the temperature of the water in your household? Why, why do they want to oh. keep it at a certain level? That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, I think, I think <laughs> so it's an interesting question. There's probably two factors. One is to try to reduce the amount of energy we use in our households, which is just a drop in the bucket compared to what you know, you know, uh, industry uses. I mean, it's like a joke. It's the same thing with water. I mean, like water uses in general, uh, whether it's watering your lawn or, or taking showers or flushing a commode or you know, washing your dishes, and everything else, it constitutes like about one percent of national water use. So it makes no difference. Like this is an illusion. It's the same thing with the amount of energy that your washing machine does. It makes no difference in terms of, plus we're paying for our energy. I mean, more or less there is a price system there. The other factor is safety. Uh, they're probably like, you know, some people got burned at some point, you know, at 130 or 140 and, you know, hey, this is what happens, you live and learn, right? But instead, of course, the regulators have to take care of us and make sure that we never burn ourselves and give us these, these tepid, uh, uh, water temperatures. We're too stupid yeah. to realize that hot water burns us. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. <laughs> so what you have to do is go in and hack your water heater if you if you possibly can, uh, and crank it up to 130, 140. Uh, so, in other words, you're wearing not you, but most everybody is wearing filthy clothes. Like right now, it's just a fact. 
And by the way, it doesn't matter. You can send your laundry off to the local laundromat. I feel terrible for these people, actually. Um, uh, the, okay, um, why, why so? Well, because they're not allowed to use uh, phosphates either, you know? Sure. So, you know, I send, you know, if you send your shirts out to get them laundered by a professional laundry, you get them back, the collars are still stained. I mean, you have to treat your shirts before you send them out nowadays. This is preposterous. I mean, this should not be happening. If you just dump your laundry on the local uh, professional laundry service, they will come back probably dirtier than you could do them at home. I mean, their their whole business model is being destroyed. And I've talked to a lot of these people. I'll go in and talk to them. I go, what's it like for you? You can't use any phosphates. You know, they're like, oh, God, do we really want to talk about this? I mean, it's terrible. It's a terrible subject for them. Uh, so if you if you go out and get phosphates and use it in your laundry, this is not illegal. You're not going to no. get thrown in prison for doing it, and no. you can buy it off the shelf at certain places. You, you can for now. There are some states in which it's banned. I can't remember if it's Michigan or Wisconsin. There's one Midwestern state where it's actually banned. It's like contraband. You have to like smuggle it in from Ohio or something. Um, but uh, the only place, to, and, and you're not going to find it in the laundry section at, um, at, the, at the store. I mean, you can't get it at your local uh, drugstore or your grocery store. You have to go to a big box um, uh, uh, hardware store. And, and even then, you won't find it with the dishwashers and the detergents. You have to go to the paint section. And, 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 and there you will find what's called trisodium phosphate. Now, there are two kinds of trisodium phosphate. There's fake TSP and real TSP. So you can only buy the real TSP. <clears throat> so why is it for sale? And here's why. Uh, painters need this stuff to get surfaces clean. If you've ever painted anything, uh, experience will tell you over time that uh, the most important thing about painting is preparing the surface. You've got mm -hmm. to have a really, really clean surface in order for paint to really work. The only way to really get anything clean is by using phosphates because you soap it down. If, unless you can get the soap off, uh, then it's going to be dirtier than ever. So you've got to have phosphates. So paint the paint industry, the painter's lobby has made sure that TSP it continues to be available uh, for professional painters. Um, so that's what you have to buy. And uh, I know that at my local big box hardware store, there's been a, a year long uh, rush to get TSP because once people figure this out, now everybody's buying the TSP to add to their laundry. So it's a good idea when you find a good stash of the stuff to, to you know, stock up, get six, 12, 24 boxes of the thing because it's, it's, you're going to need it for a while. Then who knows when the government bans are going to come about. I forget now which state it is where it's banned, but I know somebody in that state that tried to order it from, from uh, Amazon and Amazon shot back a note. I'm sorry, because of the state you live in, you cannot buy this product. It's insane. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, and, and look what it's doing. It's making us less civilized, right? It's, you know, clean clothes are a sign of civilization. They're mm -hmm. a sign of the advance of culture. They're a sign of human liberation. Uh, back in the 1950s, um, it was, there was a phrase that, that women used, liberation from drudgery. Huh. Like all the consumer products were about liberation from drudgery. That's why there were garbage disposals. That's where... Um, dishwashers came from. That's where dry, dryers and clothes washers came from. The less drudgery is in your life, the freer you are, the more choice you have. And technology was driving towards this end. Now we have regulators getting involved in like reversing this process. And it's very, very dangerous. I, I think it's not only bad for human welfare and, and for the look of our clothes, it's, 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 it's bad. Um, it's, but there's a potential health risk here too. Because unless you're killing the germs and getting rid of the horrible things that accumulate on your on your clothes and on your body and everywhere, um, you know, you, you run a risk of being less healthy than you otherwise would be. Sure. I mean, it's amazing stuff. And it's, you know, I, I think it's incredible. Everybody should check out the Liberty Guide on Liberty Me. And this is the kind of stuff that that's happening with the Liberty Guides. Uh, this is just the beginning. There's all sorts of great things that you can do to improve your life, make yourself freer on a daily basis that aren't illegal, that won't get you thrown in prison, and uh, it's just, it's knowledge that needs to be spread. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, and you know, maybe you and I should do this again at some point, because I would like to talk to you a little bit at some point about showers. Yeah, definitely. This is a very serious subject, too. 
Um, I mean, it's very interesting to me that we live in times where we're ever more prosperous. So our showers tend to be like these big, large cavernous places with beautiful tiles everywhere with gigantic shower heads and everything else. And then you finally get to start to take your shower and you turn it on. It's a tiny little spray that comes out and it's lukewarm water. This is pathetic. So we need to have another podcast interview on this. Definitely. Definitely. We'll do it very soon. Thanks so much, Jeffrey. Uh, it's always a pleasure to do this. And, uh, you know, like I said to you before the interview, I've, I've never worn a bow tie in one of these with you because I, I didn't want to be cliche, but uh, I finally gave in because I thought it worked with the outfit. And uh, great. yeah, I know, I know. It's great. We have, we finally have the, the connection. So it's, it's, it's a, a, a good looking clean clothes. It's exciting. It's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeffrey. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye bye.